you need a little extra time or okay? Yeah, keep, yeah I got my promo going. My jingle, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, you just moved this. I got the way, so I'm going to get you. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, you can see the top mic over the top mic. Yeah, the mic's in there, but you guys, we can see it. This your room. That's yours. Welcome to the Why You Can't See Two Brother Radio Show, Real Estate Edition. This is Jim Lisiaga, and I want to say hello to Dave. David, David Sweetak. David Sweetak, yeah, he's my our co-producer. <laughs> hey Nick, how are you today? I'm doing okay. Having a good day so far. Lively discussion. The last show. Mm -hmm. well, What's the name of that last show? Give them a plug. Politics, the law, and you. Those guys are awesome. They're awesome. Awesome attorneys. The two good brothers. They got some great topics that they talk about. Mm -hmm. But uh, we had a great topic today um, that we're talking about real strictly real estate, and we're going to be dealing with the Community Reinvestment Act, or the CRA. And I don't know if you ever heard of that term before, Nick. No, I don't think so. It doesn't sound like it rings a bell or anything like that, no. We're also going to be talking on the second half. Uh, now, we're going to go on break about 14 minutes after, if that's okay, Nick. And uh, we are, we're taping this show as well, so you're going to be able to uh, see this show um, uh, on tape on the <coughs> website, the letter yyesyoucan.com. Yyesyoucan.com. And uh, we're going to get right into this. Uh, by the way, let's just give a little bit of a... Last last week was our first show, and it was like an introductory show. You had a good time, right, Dave? It was uh, quite interesting. Never never had done this before, but I have talked before. You ha I definitely have <laughs> talked before, yes. Uh, great researcher you are, by the way. I just want to mention that. That's uh, You're a real asset to the show and great co-producer. I really like the ideas you're giving, thrown out here. Um, and you're very knowledgeable, so I want to thank you, Dave, for being here with me. Not a problem. Um, yeah, we're gonna after uh, we're gonna have a promo again, and uh, about 14 after, and then we're gonna cut the tape off, okay, reset it up, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about in the second half about Donald Trump, Mr. Real Estate. Remember we were mentioning that Nick last mm -hmm. week? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some things that you probably didn't have heard of, and it was good. I mean, he's in the news everywhere. He's got a, a number, I think a number one or top ten rated show. Uh, you know, he was talking about uh, the 44th president's birth certificate. Yep. So, I mean, he's been in the news everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that, his, his name came up because the Community Reinvestment Act really got started with a local activist group from Chicago. That's right. You know, in Chicago, and, and for you guys out there, the listening world out there, you know, Chicago is a number one city for civil rights. Uh, so, you know, the Haymarket riots, you go way back. I would I would not have really thought about, thought of that. I would have thought, you know, the number one place would have been out there in like San Francisco, California. New York, maybe. More, more of California, California. type of... Uh, well, the Southwest, you know, the, the Southwest has, if you do look at civil rights, uh, the South, and this is a, we're going to get into CRA, so this kind of goes into it, okay? But the Southwest, our, our, the show prior to ours, they were talking about Spanish language, and they were talking about, you know, should we only speak Spanish and that type of thing. Really, if you look at it, a lot of the civil rights movement was created in the Southwest and then into the South because this historical fact See, Mexico was the first country in North America to get rid of slavery. I believe it was around 1830. So in North America, slavery was, it was rampant. But in Mexico, the country Mexico, in 1830, abolished it. Most people don't realize it. So it goes all the way down. It goes, and of course, it goes all the way to you know, Texas and everything. So Texas, the Southwest, has a lot of civil rights 
uh, the, the beginnings of, of the civil rights movement was in the Southwest. And then it, we got caught up, of course, you know, in the 40s and 50s and 60s with those Jim Crow laws, you know, in the South. And But what they did is they used a lot of case law that was fought in the courts in the Southwest to combat Jim Crow's law that was happening in the South to African Americans. Just a little tidbit, I just for disclosure purposes, I just want to mention I am not an attorney. I am a paralegal, certified paralegal, but I am not an attorney. That's news to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not go I don't go around saying I'm an attorney, believe me. No, no, that's a yeah, bad that's, that's no, news no. to me. Okay. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> hopefully you don't charge me for my time here then. Oh, uh, you know, I was just thinking about you're charging me, but anyway, thanks, Dave. Yeah. But no, no, not an attorney. But these are some of the historical facts. Five hundred dollars. So we're yeah, five hundred dollars, yeah. For what, two months worth of work. All right. So, you know, so community reinvestment act we're gonna be talking about it. And I wanted to uh, I, I like they me, you know here in front of me I, I took some wrote down some notes. In the community reinvest the community reinvestment act is a framework for financial institutions, state and local governments, and community organizations to jointly promote banking services to all members of the community. Um, it prohibits redlining, which is the biggest problem that was out there, and it encourages efforts to meet the credit needs of all the community members, including members of the low and moderate income neighborhoods. Well, see, you mentioned something really important there, and that was redlining. And that's what Community Reinvestment Act was all about. It was, I don't know if you, you probably never heard the term, maybe in college you have, Nick, redlining. Uh, it's no. way before your day. Probably, uh, yeah. Yes, and what we did, uh, being in my age group, uh, if you were Latino or if you were black, Mm -hmm. uh, or I like to say African American, let's be specific, okay? Um, you were discriminated in, a, in housing, especially in Chicago. And that's why that movement that you mentioned, Dave, came about in Chicago because uh, it was really, it, it, was a, it was a big deal of not, bring, not letting African Americans or Latinos move out to the nicer parts of the city. Usually when, usually when people have come to the United States, even those that haven't, you're usually going to move to a neighborhood of people that are of like mind, people that are of the, of the same as you are. For whatever reason, whatever the same is, you're gonna move into the same neighborhood. So if you're an Italian, you're gonna move into an Italian neighborhood, most likely. Because you have some things that are Similar. in common. Yeah. You're going to move into areas where you have things in common with other people. So you got discrimination and people enjoy discriminating against uh, black people. And redlining was, you know, your ability to take a look at, literally take a look at a map and say, you know, this area code here you know, all black people, let's draw a red line around it and say we're not going to deal with those people. And that was discrimination. Financially. And discrimination on any, in any way other than one's ability to perform is downright wrong. And what I mean by perform as far as a um, loan on a house. Um, talking about opportunity financial opportunity but you're right I mean if, I like if you don't this. have the, if you have the ability to pay back your loan there's no excuse not to loan the person the money and what they did and we have to go back a little bit you know um, when we get into redlining what what happened in the past was you know you just the old stockyards which you're too young Nick to, to know you probably see it but it was Move. yeah a lot of yeah we're at all the as in, in Spanish, we call them vacas, you know, the cows, you know, they come and they, you know, they came from the southwest and they, they came by, by the train loads and, and they delivered them in Chicago with the meat packing plants in Civil Chicago, the south side. What's that? Civil rights came along with the... Well, yeah, you, the, you know what, in a way, you, you know, that's a good analogy. Civil no, rights I, did I come with... Giving a little joke there, but 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, civil rights kind of came with that because there was a lot of civil rights laws on the books that were because of the Southwest. But, uh, yeah, so it came down, it came to the north, it came to the Midwest, it came to, to, to the Chicagoland area because of meat packers, uh, all the companies out there. And what happened is um, the, usually it was a lot of Mexicans that came with that because the first cowboys were from the Southwest. They were Mexican. They were, they'd been riding horses and working with cattle and you know raising all these all, all, all this uh, these commodities that you know they came with the, they came with the trains to move the cattle to the stockyards like if there's an old park called McKinley Park on Archer and Western at one time back in the day that's where they used to house a lot of the animals there used to be a racetrack as well and they would go down Western Avenue to Ashland and they would deliver you know, the trains would be right off Western uh, and they, what they would do is they would deliver the cattle right there, okay? They would deliver the cattle to the, um, to the stockyards, the Chicago stockyards. And with that came Latinos, okay? There came Mexicans, Americans, okay? Because they knew how to handle, how to move the, 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 the cattle, okay? They worked around uh, agriculture, they worked around farming, they worked around ranching. They were real good ranchers, real good riders, and they had to get the product to where the meat plants were. And that was over there by, by Ashland Avenue. A lot of them were. So with that said, um, we kind of go, what happens in World War II? World War II is that a lot of uh, Americans, okay, went to war. So they weren't in the plants. They weren't in the plants producing and making. And of course, when you're fighting a war, you have to make, you have to produce. You have to have the machinery to produce. Now you need the men and women to, or people to come in and work the machines. So they, we had the women, the men were fighting over in Europe. So what they did is they opened it up to people of color in the southern states. And these were the African Americans that migrated to the north and to the Midwest to take to fill those, those jobs because the young men and women were out there fighting, okay? And this has to do all with discrimination, okay? Prior to that, they weren't allowed to go to these jobs, but because we were fighting Hitler find the fascists, okay, they came up, they came and they came and they worked in the Midwest in the meatpacking plants, they made, you know, for food, you gotta feed troops, you gotta feed the army, you know, they, they made machinery, Chicago was a great place for that, where nothing but manufacturing in those, in those days, not service oriented, Nick, like we're used to today, we're talking about real job security. So they came in there and they filled those, those gaps. So you got an influx of people to the north, in Midwest, um, the North was predominantly known as a uh, manufacturing hub yeah. in the South, uh, um, primarily farming. So you had to get these people in the housing somehow. Yeah, if you're going to have them, he come here and migrate here. Now they have to live somewhere. So what they did, because there was so much discrimination going on, Nick, that um, they decided we're going to put people in certain areas, and you can't move out of those certain areas. You can't move out of those certain areas. You're going to stay in a certain group. And you can't. Well, you could, but it would be kind of difficult, especially when we needed to get a loan to uh, move somewhere else. Or even renting at that time, renting. I mean, you just couldn't say, "Well, I'm going to go rent out here." You know, if I was out of my uh, corridor, let's say, you know, I, you know, I can't move out somewhere and, and, and get a I'd go get an apartment. You know, that's where it did happen. They would say, "No, you can't because you're African American or because you're Mexican American." You cannot go past a certain way. You know, you have to stay in this certain area, and that's why uh, redlining became so effective. Bankers said, "Oh wow, man, we, we we could get them loans now for cars. We have a whole group of people because remember, all the young people are fighting in World War II, but we do have a group of men here that are working. You know what? We should tap into their paycheck. We should give them some type of loans. Maybe we get them car loans." Uh, or, or maybe to buy some credit, maybe clothes or food and that type of thing. So banks started coming up and making little branches and reaching out and loan, lending money in these areas. How redlining came about was exactly that. Unfortunately, people at that time, uh, and I'm talking about white people, okay, Anglos, okay, Anglo people, because I'm Latino, you're Anglo, I have no, no problem with that. 
they decided we're going to keep these people where they belong in a certain area only and they can't expand out this all has to do with real estate okay they can't expand out because we don't want them we don't want these people of color to live in our neighborhoods okay now that was a fact is not make believe that was a fact okay you people of color cannot go in this neighborhood cannot go cannot rent or whatever but guess what these people are saving their money and they found out hey with a small down payment I could buy a property just like everyone else did the bank said oh we have a problem here our depositors are our, our traditional depositors they don't want these these people of color to be actually going oh bless you they, and uh, this is a this is a catchy subject no pun intended uh, you know something not to sneeze at that <laughs> Nick but anyway uh, the thing I'm saying is that that they found out that these people have money to buy a property without payment. They were going to the realtors. The realtors were like, no, we are not going to sell a property to people of color. Well, I, one of the reasons was because they were concerned of uh, the devaluation of the property. That's why. And when, when one person got, supposedly if one person undesirable person got into the neighborhood there was going to be um, everybody scrambling to get out because there were going to be a bunch more undesirables coming into the neighborhood but you know that didn't even come effect because these were new people in in the area they were now remember the movies back then you know they, they showed people of color being stupid being uh, dope addicts uh, uh, being rapists being uh, killers have you ever seen some of these old movies from the 30s yeah some of them like that yeah I've seen some of them that come to mind the one that comes to mind is the Thin Man series with mm -hmm. William Powell and Myrna Loy with that yeah exactly and so people had the misconception that you know people were going to bring bringing all this stuff you know and just you know in, in affecting their neighborhoods so the bankers said you know what we're only going to lend in this certain area. We don't want to miss out on, on lending opportunities. There's money. There's money out there. These people got money in their pocket. They're getting paychecks. We don't want to lose out on that. But let's keep them contained, actually contained, okay? We can keep them in certain neighborhoods where they cannot expand, okay? And that's where redlining came about. But the only problem with that is some of the – it's caught on. So imagine you're, you're, you're a banker from Chicago – and you're dealing with another bank in San Francisco, or you're dealing with another bank for, you know, so the money flows, and you're dealing with another bank in Massachusetts, and you guys are golfing, you're going out and having dinners or whatever, and you come up with the master plan that I want to call of redlining. In other words, we are going to lend money, but to all the people not to, you know, not to go into certain areas. And that's what redlining was all about. So how do they bring that to an end? Wasn't that with the uh, creation of the uh, Community Reinvestment Act? Yeah, that was a, that the, well, Community Reinvestment is a Title uh, Eight sec, uh, uh, Title Eight of the Housing and Community Development Act of 1977. But, you know, we're going to get back to this real quick. We're going to come up with a small break. We're going to put on the jingle again, the Why You Can Jingle. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. Hey, Chicago land. Do you need to stop that over here? Yeah. It's at 18 minutes. So I'll play your promo here, and then we'll play the jingle again for you so it should work out. 